Hello YouTube and Facebook friends. Um, today I want to uh, install a new processor into my uh, home PC. This is a Intel Duo 2 Quad Core. Um, and so um, I bought it on Amazon and it came in the mail. I'm going to take it out and show it to you. And in a second I'm going to take my computer apart and put it in and I'm going to show you what happens. Hopefully uh, it will work properly. Here's the uh, heat sink cement and the processor. I can take it out of its case. Let me show it to you. Oh, it's heavy. And the other side. This is a quad core 3 gigahertz uh, is the speed, which is the same as my current dual core, Duo 2 dual core. This is a quad core, so this should give me faster processing speed. So this is my old piece of a computer. It's a HP uh, Elite 8000. Um, and inside you can see that I have uh, an old laptop hard drive here, another laptop hard drive here. I get it out um, with a guard to make it fit into a normal uh, PC hard drive. I've got two PC hard drives here. I think uh, a 360 and a 3 terabyte. And this one down here is an eco-friendly, uh, low energy use, 3 terabyte hard drive. Um, here's my video card. This adds an extra gigabyte of RAM. I'm currently running with um, four two gigabyte sticks of RAM, so a total um, of eight gigabytes of RAM. Um, here's a fan. I just recently replaced the screws with these rubber um, attachments to make the fan quieter. Here's the power supply, um, this, the CD drive up here, um, and then the processor sits under this fan um, and this is the cooling fan for the processor. So um, let's go ahead and, oh, uh, just so we know, note that it's still plugged in, though the computer is off, and this is to keep it grounded. I'm touching the uh, power supply here quite a bit just to make sure no static builds up. I watched a lot of videos on YouTube that say that we don't have to worry about static discharge, that that's kind of a joke, and that um, it's not really necessary uh, to wear the wristband. So we're going to start by removing um, removing the fan and the heat sink uh, from the processor. Okay, so now I've used the flathead screwdriver because these are not Phillips head screws, they're odd screws, um, to loosen all the screws around here. And we're ready to unplug the fan. So I'm reaching in and I'm unplugging the fan from the power source on the motherboard. That looks like a four pin power source and I'm lifting the uh, fan and the heat sink off. You can see where there's some old uh, heat sink uh, cement um, and there is the old processor in here. Um, and that's it. So to remove the processor, we'll set the fan aside for a second. We have to release this pin uh, and pull it to the side. That. Oh, apparently it's still on. How is it still on? That's not good. I'm going to unplug it. Yeah, I was going to say there is a battery. Now it's off. There's a battery for the time and date in the, on the motherboard to keep the BIOS. Um, I'm not too worried about that. To be touching other things. Um, is there a switch? There's no power switch. I had it off. I told it to shut down. I don't see how it should have any issues. And then you push on this tab here to lift um, the plate off. And that tips tips back. Where? Oh yeah, there's dust all inside there from the fan. And then we can remove um, the old processor. And this is the old um, dual core. It's a Intel 
duo two dual core 3.0 gigahertz processor. Um, this is the one that's coming out. Um, our next step will be to clean the old crud off of the heat sink um, using alcohol. Right now I have a cotton cotton square, uh, the type that uh, some people might use to remove makeup, and 91% alcohol, uh, isopropyl alcohol. So we're going to um, use this to clean off um, the heat sink. The old cement is there and you want to get this really clean. Um, and this could take a while, so um, bear with me. The reason you want to use alcohol is because you want it to evaporate clean. You don't want anything left behind because that could interfere with the conduction um, on the new processor. Once you've um, installed the processor, you want nice contact with the heat sink against the processor to keep the processor cool. Um, so we'll be back in a few seconds after this is all clean. Start. Okay, now the heat sink surface has been cleaned and we have our processor and we're ready to mount the processor. You'll want to find the little triangle in the corner and match it up with the triangle inside the motherboard. However, I'm not seeing that. And so then you want to look for the notches that are here. And there's only one way that they'll fit with those notches, which actually does match up with this corner that's been sort of nicked off that matches up with that triangle in this corner here. Um, so there's the corner with the triangle. And then here you can see this corner has sort of the edge chipped off of it. Like that. And so now I'm going to seat the new processor. I'm going to wiggle it a little bit. Oh, and I have it plugged in still. Jeez, I hope that wasn't bad. Um, we don't know if this is going to work. Um, geez, stop beeping. I'm going to unplug it again. And then um, click this restraint arm back into place. And then we'll um, get the heat sink compound. Um, oh, which I ordered. I ordered the silver, silver compound, but they sent me this one with the heat sink, so the other one hasn't come yet. Um, so we're just gonna use this. That's about all you need. Um, that's probably a little bit too much. I hope that's not a problem. Um, I'm not going to try to remove it. I get things too messy, so. Um, I don't know, I'm fine. Um, let's see. Put this in the same place it was before. to fasten all the screws and we'll be back in a second to plug it in and see if it works. So we're tightening these screws down as far as they'll go. And they just stop so you can't go any farther than where they stop. Hoping that that's gonna work. A little extra tightening there to get into that. All right, now we're gonna plug everything back in. Uh, all right, uh, let's see. I got Wi-Fi monitor. I don't need the mouse and the keyboard yet. We're just gonna test it. Fan starts up. hear any beeping warning sounds. 
it looks like my grub bootloader um, has engaged. That's a good sign. Let's see, if, let's see what we're going to get. But I don't think we'd even get here if the processor wasn't working. Um, I'm assuming that grub loader, uh, grub bootloader, requires some processing. So that took a second, but uh, we're booted up here. It says that um, I have to restart my computer to use the new devices and that there's new devices ready to use. I wonder if that's talking about the processor or driver. I'm not exactly sure, um, but it looks like we're, uh, we're in business here. So I'm gonna um, plug the mouse in and the keyboard um, and put the cover back on. And then I'm going to um, restart the computer and make sure everything's working. On, and the cat wants to be in the video too. Then we're going to check on the uh, cores to make sure we've really got a quad core processor here. Uh, yep, there they are. There's four, four processors. I checked on this just a second ago and there was only two. So we've got four processors. Um, Working. I'm still going to restart just because it seems to think that that's important. So we're going to go ahead and restart. But despite all the beeping and the leaving the thing plugged in and static electricity and all the things that could have gone wrong, it does appear that now I have a quad core processor running at 3.0 gigahertz. I should get slightly faster um, speeds when multitasking um, or using complex. Uh, uh, programs such as vi video editing, like what I'm going to be doing uh, here. I don't know why my camera person is showing you the dark inside of the computer, but um, thank you for watching. Uh, if, if we have any problems, uh, we'll let you know with a follow-up video. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe.